Yeah, so I was just going to ask you, Andreas. Um, so there's Bitcoin, the currency, and then there's Bitcoin, the technology. To make the whole thing more mainstream, what's required in your eyes? And if you if you were to put money into something, what would you be putting money into to make it mainstream? Um, there's Bitcoin, the currency. There's Bitcoin, the technology, the blockchain technology. There's also Bitcoin, the network itself. And, and those three things work together to create this system. You can't really take the technology out of the currency. So the technology itself doesn't work without a viable currency. And for the first year, uh, probably year and a half, arguably Bitcoin didn't work as a practical means of exchange because it didn't have value through adoption. It takes a certain momentum of people using it. Um, money is an interesting abstraction because as far as I'm concerned, money is a language we use to express value. But how money gets its value itself uh, is, is a subject of a lot of philosophical debate. The bottom line today is that money gets its value through adoption, through use. Meaning that if I give you something and you're willing to give me something in return, then it's money. Right? If, if I can buy eggs with it, it's money. Right? And, and people can tell me that Bitcoin isn't money, but I've been living off it for a year and a half. And so my life says otherwise. I use it to spend and buy things all the time, products and services. So as far as I'm concerned, it's money. You can't separate the money from the technology from the network. Um, what I can tell you is that this is still an experimental system. And the currency itself is subject to volatility and fluctuation. It's subject to uh, sentiment, market sentiment, uh, reputation risks and manipulation. So there are ways that conceivably Bitcoin could crash. Uh, probably very unlikely at this point. It survived so many rounds of near-death crashes. And the thing about money is that the very fact that it bounces back and continues to exist gives it even more value. Resilience is, is part of the value. Uh, Bitcoin today, in my mind, is unlikely uh, to suffer a crash. But if it did, I can't predict that, because it is a market-based system. What I can predict is that the blockchain technology will be here a decade from now, and will fundamentally transform financial services. Most likely, I think probably higher than 90% probability, it is going to do that with Bitcoin as the currency, and under the same name. Uh, but there is a small chance that it will do it under a different currency. And where would you put your if you were to fund something to make it more mainstream, what arena would you be funding? So I've, I've said this many, many times. Um, I don't think Bitcoin, the currency, is a sensible investment for most people. It's far too volatile. If you have a well-balanced portfolio, you understand what a, a high volatility um, asset is like, and you are willing to take that kind of risk, and you really understand it, maybe you allocate a small percentage of your portfolio uh, into the high risk. Like for example, do you, if you do that with penny stocks, um, or if you do that with um, small country, small cap currencies, then maybe Bitcoin is for you. Otherwise, it is not for most people. And it's a really huge mistake to start day trading, or to assume that Bitcoin is some kind of get rich quick scheme. You know, the most effective way to make a million dollars with Bitcoin in a year is to start with two million. <laughs> and then lose half of it by day trading. Um, what I would invest in is very simple. I would invest in skills. I would invest in innovation. I would invest in real products and services. Most of the products and services that are being developed for Bitcoin transcend Bitcoin itself. They're not really about the currency itself. They could be applied to any of the digital decentralized currencies. They're really blockchain applications. And so therefore they are transcend they transcend the single currency. They can be applied in many different concepts. Um, skills are something that no one can take away from you. 
If you learn how to use blockchain technologies, if you learn how to program, how to use the APIs, if you understand the architecture of blockchain, if you understand the proof-of-work algorithm and the consensus mechanism that it allows, that skill no one can ever take away from you. And that skill, in my opinion, is as valuable as learning how to build a website in 1998 or learning how to build an IELTS app in 2005. It's a skill that you can build a career on, and that's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, I built my career on Bitcoin, and I've built it on skills. I haven't invested in companies. I haven't mm -hmm. invested in Bitcoin. Uh, I don't even own much Bitcoin. Um, I invested in skills, and so I, my approach to this was to write a book to teach people how to use Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, that no one can take away from you. It doesn't matter what the price is. You still know how to use uh, blockchain technologies. That is a skill that will translate into a career, into a job, uh, and into fun. Um, at least for me, it does. Mm. That's the, the definition of a geek is someone who thinks things like that are fun. <laughs> right here.